I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rhema Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rhema Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Well, hello today and welcome to Rhema Praise. I believe that we have something that is of interest to you and is important to us all, really. I'm talking about he's the master of the storm. You know, honey, storms are something that, well, I don't know about you, but I don't like storms. <laughs> I don't like physical storms. And actually, I don't like storms in the natural that we face every day. Yeah. But we all do face them. Yeah, we face storms. And, and as Christians, we need to see those storms rising before uh, they get there. Yes. You see, sometimes when we are, well, we're in tornado country here. Yes. And they, they say, uh, they say tornado watch. That means there's a potential. Yes. Well, we as Christians need to be on the watch all the time because the enemy is always going to try to place a storm in our That's lives right. to get us messed up and get us away from God. Now, you get through the storms by trusting the master of the storms, which is God himself. Yeah. He's the one, he's the one that, 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 uh, that you go to. Yes. Because remember when Jesus was on the boat, he told the storm to be still. Yes. See, when we get in the storms of life, Instead of letting it defeat us, we need to defeat it. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, we can see many people in the Bible. There were the Daniel in the lion's den, the, Hebrew, the yes. three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, <clears throat> Paul on the ship that was going down. Yes. And in all of them, that was a storm, but God delivered because Absolutely. they had their trust in him. So let's go right now where I'm talking about he's the master of the storm. You know, a lot of people in the Bible went through natural storms in their lives. You know, Noah had to go through the flood. Jonah ran from God and he got, <laughs> got in trouble in that storm that he was in, in the bellies of the whale. And then, did you ever remember the story of the disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee? They ran into a storm. Paul, on his way to, to Rome, Ran into a storm. Now, the more, I could name a whole lot more people that ran into storms and had to deal with storms of different, you know, for different reasons. Uh, like Jonah, he disobeyed God. Paul and the disciples were obeying God. Various kinds of storms come to everybody. I don't care who you are, I don't care how much faith you got. Natural storms come, family difficulties come, financial crisis and hardships come, sickness comes, sometimes a religious storm comes and you're, you're ousted and ostracized because of what you believe. You know, no one is exempt from storms. If you are born again Christian, the devil is going to make sure that you run into a few storms. You know, your world may be being tossed around. The waves may be rocking your boat. It may look like the sun's never going to shine again. But if you'll trust God, the master of the storm, you'll come through. Let's go to Acts 27 and read. I'm going to be reading this out of the NLT today. Sometimes I like to read from the NLT because it says it a little, in a little more modern language. Acts 27, 14. But when the weather changed abruptly and the wind of a typhoon strength called a nor northeasterner, burst across the island and blew us out to sea. 
The sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run before the gale. We sailed along the sheltered side of a small island of Kada, where with great difficulty they hoisted aboard the lifeboat that we were towing behind us. Then the sailors bound ropes around the hull of the ship to strengthen it. They were afraid of being driven across the sandbars by the Cyrus Straits off of the African coast. So they lowered the sea anchor to slow the ship, were driven before the wind. The next day, as the gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The ter terrible storm raged for, raged for many days, blotting out the sun and stars until, all, all, until the last of all hope was gone. Now, let, let's look at this story. Here, Paul is on this ship with a group of soldiers that had taken him to Rome because he had appealed to Caesar. He had been before King Agrippa, and he, he appealed to Caesar because he is a Roman citizen. To us, that would be the same as appealing to the Supreme Court. That would we that that might help us to understand. He had he had he had asked to, an appeal to Caesar, which was the highest he could go, and the Supreme Court is the highest we can go. They had difficulty sailing. They wanted to sail to a better port before the winter. Now, if you'll read up ahead of that, Paul had warned them, but they didn't pay any attention to him. And when this, this storm came upon them, in the natural, it looked like they'd never see the sun again. Man, they were holding on to everything they could hold on to to keep when the waves were crashing over the ship. They were doing everything they could if they had to walk to keep their balance. The masts on the ship were being broken like by the wind, by like match stick, match sticks. <laughs> there we go. They threw the anchor overboard to let it drag to maybe keep them from going into the rocks. And they wondered if they'd ever see the sun again. Maybe you've been in a storm like that. A giant wave of sub you know, circumstances and situations tossing you about on the sea of life. You're being blown about by the continuous winds of adversity that's coming against you, and it doesn't seem like you're ever going to get any, any relief. Are you going to ever see a better day? You know, sometimes... When we get into these situations, I've seen it over the years. I've been, I've been, I've been around a few years now, like about 50 of them, I guess. <laughs> you might want to add 34 to that. <laughs> and I have seen people, when they get into the storms of life and things are happening, and it looks like that... <laughs> that the same thing that these guys, they said they're going to never see the sun again. But let me tell you what, if you'll believe God, the son of God will appear. He is the master of the storm. The master of the storm in the Bible helped many people. I think about the three Hebrew children. There they were in the fiery furnace. But the master of the storm showed up. Daniel 3. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement, explained to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them in the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. <laughs> then, you know, the, 
disciples on the Sea of Galilee. Remember, they were in the storm, and the storm broke up on them, and they woke Jesus up and said, Say, we're going to drown, save us. That's found in Matthew 8, 24. I'm just paraphrasing it. And he asked them, why are you so afraid? Why do you have so little faith? He got up and rebuked the storm. Now, Paul and Silas found themselves in the prison cell at midnight. Now, midnight, when, when, a lot of times we use the term midnight to, uh, as this is the worst thing it can be. This is, this is bad. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm running out of words to describe what I want to say. But anyway, how many understand what went about to midnight? <laughs> you know. And it says here in Acts 16, 25, 26, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chain uh, off of every, fell off of every prisoner. Now, I want you to notice that they didn't start griping and complaining. Silas could have said to, to Paul, so what in the world you get us in this mess for? Blah, 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 blah. But they began to sing praises to God. In the middle of your storm, you got to be able to lift your head and sing praises to God because the help from the storm is not in your griping and complaining and whining and crying. The help from your storm is when you begin to praise God. And here we, we see Paul on the way to Rome. Now, we didn't read this part. We're going down. We read in Acts 24, 25. He said to Paul, the angel of the Lord, don't be afraid. Paul, you will surely stand trial before Caesar. Once more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. It is just, it will be just as he said. Here, God promised Paul that you're going to get out of the storm. He said, you're going to see the sun again. They hadn't seen the sun for days. Matthew 5, 44 says, for he gives his, he gives his sunlight, this is the sun, S-U-N, to both the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. Here we see the S-U-N shining on both the righteous and the unrighteous. This can mean several things. To everyone, the sun will appear again every morning, no matter what, you, what kind of condition you're in, what you see, what you don't see, the sun comes up every morning. But there's another thing that the rising of the sun in the eastern sky can remind us of. It can remind us and everyone else that Jesus arose, the Son of God, and there was brightness wherever he went. Have you ever read in the Word of God when, 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 the, when the Spirit of God came around, there's always brightness? Sometimes the devil tried to tell you that you're not going to make it out of this storm. Oh, yeah, God's helped you before, but this time it's not going to work. You know, he likes to do that when, you re when you're in some kind of a situation. He like, you're, you're down anyway. He never attacks you when you're up. He t attacks you when you're down. You know, the devil may have told you that you're never going to be free again, but the song we sang said you are free. You may not see any help anywhere on the horizon. It's dark. The wind is blowing. Everything around you is upset, and you see no way out. But keep trusting God, and on that horizon, you'll see a little speck of light, 
And as you keep praising God, that speck gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it comes and washes over you and drives away the darkness, drives away the storm, drives away the situation, and you stand rejoicing free, free indeed. You see, God has promised to help you in your storm. It's up to you whether you reach out and get that help. He's not going to come and force it on you. He's not going to come down and beat you on the head and say, here, here it is. He's, it, he has offered it. All you have to do is begin to, by faith, to believe what the Word says. And as you believe the Word and praise Him, you'll begin to see that the darkness will flee and you'll run with glee. Hallelujah. You see, all storms are temporary, but God is permanent. The promises of God are permanent. All of your storms in life are temporary. God is constantly and permanently committed to getting us through the storm. He never said we wouldn't have a storm. But he said, I will be with you through them all. You know, we need to stir ourselves up and begin to praise God. The master of the storm is with you always, continually, every day, in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, in the bad time, the good time, the in-between time, all the time, God, the master of the storm, is with you, and he'll take you through to the other side if you'll simply believe him. The master of the storm told us in his word, in the word, we would go through storms. Here's what he told Paul in Acts 27, 23. Last night, the angel of, of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you surely shall stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God, it will be as he said. Paul said something here that's vitally important. The God whom, to whom I belong and whom I serve. He said he belonged to God and he's serving him. Hey, it doesn't matter if it's the midnight hour. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the storm. You belong to God and you're serving him, and he'll take you to the other side. Some people get in the middle of a storm, and they say, well, I don't know why God's letting this happen to me. They start blaming God. Oh, no, I'd never blame God. Well, that's just what you did when you said that. Why is God letting this happen to me? That's blaming God. Come on. You know, some people get in the middle of a storm, they quit coming to church. They quit reading the Bible. Well, this is not helping me. I don't know what's going away. You know, in the midnight hour, don't run from God. Run to God. During the storm, you, you need to can draw closer than you ever have been. In the midnight hour, we need to stay firm, firmly gripped in the Word of God and not let nothing deter us. I can almost see him. He just put, put his foot up on the railing and said, I believe God, and the storm is blowing like crazy. The waves is baiting against him. I believe God. It will be easy, he told me. Let me tell you what. In the midst of your storm, put your foot up on the bow of the boat, lift up and say, I believe God. It'll be even as he told me. Believe it and receive it. Enjoy it and shout about it. Hallelujah to Jesus. 
The number two thing that he told Paul, don't be afraid. So what a storm comes. Don't be afraid. I realize that many of you are facing storms. Actually, this time of year, there is the storm of people feeling left out, yes. people fe having, feeling lonely, but that's a storm that comes our direction. There, some people are in financial storms. Other people are in other kind of storms. But let me tell you, if you will trust God and believe Him, He will help you. Now, I want to do something right now. I want to pray for you that are going through a storm in your life. Heavenly Father, I thank you. As we come to you today, I thank you because we know that you are the master of the storm. And we know that you will lead and guide us and you will bring us through the storm just as you brought many people in the word of God through the storm. I thank you now for ministering yes. peace and tranquility to everyone that's in the middle of the storm because there can be peace in the middle of the storm. I thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Now. A key is you may be in the storm, but don't let the storm get inside of you. The storm may be all around you, but it doesn't have to get a hold of you and keep you and lock you down because you can experience victory over the storm. And you know, honey, I just sense that there are those out. Maybe you've lost a loved one this year. And I know that the first Christmases, the first family events is very difficult to get through. And we've been through we've it. We've both experienced that. With our parents. Yes, my uh, father, I lost him in August. He lost his father a year later in September. And that, you know, each of those Christmases were very difficult. And I just want to encourage you, if you will just look to the Holy Spirit yes. on the inside of you, he will comfort you in the way no one else can. That's you know, right. others can say words, yes. but it's nothing like the Lord ministering the words that you need, right. that you need. And then there's one other thing I want to talk about. For those of you that have children, you know, even as a um, young child, uh, we, you know, we would tell the kids, listen, anytime that you feel like you're in danger, whatever's happening in your life, a storm, you know, you can just call up on the Lord right. and he'll help you through. Right. And I, and you know, they learn that from just a young child. Right. And so when, when people learn something from just as a young child, it becomes yes. automatic to them. That's, that's the way we were, uh -huh. right? Parents taught us. So we taught our kids. And, and, and I was thinking about an example, honey, talking about a storm. It was a snowstorm. And if you remember, uh, Denise was actually driving to get her kids from, from school because yeah. school was being closed because of the snowstorm. And I was talking to her, asking her how the roads were. And all of a sudden, I heard her say, because uh, she, I was, we were on speakers, and I heard her say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So I knew that there was a storm <laughs> right then, whatever was happening in her life. And so uh, the end of that was she said, Mom, she said, there was was a car out of control coming right toward my car. And she said, when I said the word Jesus, because you see Jesus was there in the yeah. midst of her storm, she said that car went the other direction and there was no accident. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Well, you know, uh, our offer for this month for a gift of $45 or more is my book, Where is God in My Storm? Now, there's 11 chapters in here, and this is 11 messages that I preached. My books, I don't sit down and write them. I, I minister these yes. from the pulpit, then they take it and they transcribe it and they put them into a book. And there's 11 chapters here. I'll just look at the first couple of three chapters here. And it's, when the storm is raging on the sea of life, where's God in troubled times? God will make a way. The keys to possessing the promise, remembering God is in the storm. Yes. And so there's just, and I, I really think this is a great book. Where is God in my storm? Finding an anchor in life's rough waters. 
And then what else we got there? Huh? I have, uh, this is a slimline book and it's uh, about peace. You know, so many times the enemy will try to keep us out of peace. Yes. But the Lord is our peace. And it talks uh, talks about that. And uh, also there's scripture references back here uh, that will just give you uh, scriptures on peace. Yes. And then, you know, honey, sometimes the storm that we have in life is when somebody's done something wrong to us. Yes. And we, have, and we have to act in love. Right. <laughs> and th this is three DVDs. It's all love, the way to victory. This is my dad. Uh, we are still coming up with some of his, we call them timeless teachings. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he taught these probably, uh, I think, uh, I don't know. He went 70 years in the ministry. Well, ministry. you'll be able to see by the clothes that he's wearing. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to see by the clothes that he has on. You can tell whether what it was the 70s, 80s, or 90s, or whatever. That's when he went right. on to be with the Lord yes. in, the, in 2003. It's called the Love, the Way to Victory. Now, all three of these are, like I said earlier, are for a gift of $45 or more. Go yes. right now to to your... A device, just go to rhema.org and order them right now and they'll be getting it right out to you. Guess what's on right now on the campus? Oh, our Christmas lights. <laughs> They've been on since... Uh, Thanksgiving. Since, since Thanksgiving mm -hmm. night. Uh, the, actually, the Wednesday night before, before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving yes. We turn them on yes. and they'll stay on 5.30 in the evening to 11 p.m. at night. 11.30 p.m., Yeah, 11.30 yes. p.m. at night. Uh, through January 1st. Yes. If you're anywhere in, our, in the area, they're worth the drive to come and see the Christmas lights. Uh, they're right here at, at Rama, right here in, on, in Broken Arrow, on Kenosha, uh -huh. in Broken Arrow. Yes. And actually, somebody said, I thought y'all were in Tulsa. Well, Broken Arrow is just a, a part of the Tulsa metropolitan area. area. Yes. And uh, you can actually go to, uh, to RaymaLights.org and get all the information right there. And there's pictures there, but honey, uh, it does not oh yeah. do the lights justice. Uh, and also, we're enrolling for the yes. spring intake. Can you believe that? Yeah. Year's almost over. Yeah, we, we start in January of uh, 2024. What? Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> I can't believe that. No. I, I tell you what, just go to rbtc.org slash apply. Yes. And all the information is there. Well, as we get out of here today, I want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth Lynette and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.